What's up guys? All right, we're talking about what people get wrong when they're valuing real estate. Now, I'm very passionate about this because I think I have some views that aren't standard. I see it in the comments and people question. So I want to give you some background and tips on how we valuate our real estate. It's actually what's made us so successful. It's how we've mounted the portfolio and how we get the returns that we do. And although I think it's a little non-traditional, I think that's what's made us stand the test of time. That's how we lasted 2008. That's how our properties that we've got have not only been able to stabilize, but they've been able to grow and how we find deals when others aren't. With that said, if you guys have been watching our videos, if you like the content we're making, please like, subscribe, Comment below, that is the currency of YouTube, so let's appease those YouTube gods. First thing that we believe highly is real estate, especially commercial real estate, is not an investment, it is a business. And that is how we approach. We are buying an actual business. Now this business has multiple inputs that drive value or take away value. When we look at the overall business that we're buying in strategy, we even come down to, I don't call units units. I call them products because we're looking at product market fit. At the end of the day, they're customers that are coming and they're utilizing this. We have outreach, we have overall expenses, we have certain things that we can do to improve. We have market conditions. There's all these things that go into it. And this is really what's at the crux of our practice. At first, we only solely looked at cash flow when we first started investing. We really wanted to understand the nature of the cash flow within that asset and what were the drivers and eroders of the revenue. We really wanted to understand how markets influenced demand and what it was that customers were getting out of that asset and how they utilized that asset. There's a lot of things in the real estate world that try to predict or look at value that I didn't know about, I didn't understand, and we never used when we got started. For example, cap rates. I've talked about cap rates before, and I've even had people in the comments say, you don't understand what a cap rate is. And it's not that I don't understand what a cap rate is. It's just a stupid way to measure value. It's a line item thing that looks at exact inputs and an exact calculation. We don't think that investing is done on spreadsheets. We think it's multi-dimensional. And we think it involves a lot of things that cap rates don't take into account and don't involve it. So I say things like cap rates don't really matter. I get it, I get what you're saying. The point that we try to make is investors love to boil things down to simple equations that tell them it's a go or it's not. What cap rate should I buy at? What size should it be? What's this number that I can plug into a spreadsheet and it just spits the outcome? It's a good deal. It's not. That's not how it works. And you would never value a business like this. This is not how I would ever buy a company. I would want to know who's running it. I would want to know what their value proposition is. I would want to know what strategy they employ in that market and how loyal the customer base is. There's all of these metrics that I want to see in that company because I'm trying to understand the stability of the revenue and how I can increase it. When we look at real estate investing, we look at it like a business. We don't look at it as some line items that we write. And this gets a lot of people in trouble. They think because I read it in a book and it said I should buy at this cap rate or at this point in the cycle that it should work. We have lots of things that are controlling the value of assets. When you look at the underlying value, you have to be dynamic on the way that you approach it. I'm gonna give you some examples and we're gonna kind of walk into this. but. What I really wanna look at here is instead of having a step-by-step -step formula that spits out it's a good deal or not, build out frameworks in which you can apply given scenarios and look at what the values are, the drivers and creators, but these frameworks can be adjustable. There's lots of different markets that we invest in and there's different investing strategies. There's a difference between stability. There's a difference between growth. There's a difference between creation, like development. 
right? There's a big difference between Midwestern markets, California markets, New York, Florida. There's different usage of these assets and you're looking at lots of different people that have different things they want out of that investment. It's dynamic and it should be. And therein lies the power of real estate investing because a good deal to me may not be a good deal to you. And a deal that I don't want may be amazing for you. The value is determined by lots of different things. That's what we're trying to say in evaluation. And that's one of the number one thing that people get wrong when they look at real estate. There's no imagination. They're not dynamic and they miss a lot. They miss a lot of opportunities, but they also miss a lot of downsides. Cap rates and other formulas that say that they are a measurement of value are very poor measurements of value. With that said, let's keep going. I wanna talk about some of these other things. All right, understanding value itself. I talk about frameworks and drivers. Understanding overall demand within a market is crucial you need to know where that demand is derived from, why people are utilizing a certain asset, who are the ones that utilize it, and what the revenue is associated with it. We assume that markets price everything correctly and equally. That's not true though. There are a lot of inefficiencies that go into the market. I don't believe in the short term in efficient market theory. In fact, I think it's ludicrous. In the long term, yeah, markets tend to even out, right? They tend to equal out, but they're so incredibly inefficient and they're even more inefficient because the owners that own assets are running them and own them for all sorts of different reasons. This is where we find opportunity. We may be purchasing an asset that seems like its value is very low based upon a return that we're getting because of an underlying nature of a cap rate or some other measurement. When we look at it though, we're determining that the product market fit, the customers that are utilizing it, are actually the wrong customers to utilize those individual units, right? I'm in storage, it's what we do. We're talking about storage. Those units may be need to transfer. We may need to kick those out and realign with a different customer, a different set. We see this all the time. We see pricing inefficiencies. We also see inefficiencies in the way that they're running it overall. This could be increased expenses or a lack of using revenue to return within the asset to generate a higher return on the revenue. Identify those inefficiencies that you can leverage and look at why that asset is stabilized or it's not and identify the drivers. This is what it's all about. We remember, we're thinking about this dynamically. We're looking at the asset, all of its customers, and you may have a storage facility that has 600 units in it. There's 600 people running and you have eight to 12 different unit types. There's 12 different products that you're selling. Each one of those different units has a different customer that has different needs. They have different reasons that they're in there. And sometimes those aren't meshed right. As in some facilities, they've overpopulated a given market with a certain type of unit. Maybe they just got the product market fit wrong. There's also owners that wanna maximize occupancy, not revenue. There's owners that don't reinvest and they want a static, passive asset that they're investing in. So they're not pouring in any of that revenue in to build up that facility, to market it, make better offerings, increase curbside appeal. Maybe it's not keeping up with competitors in the market. This is the next thing that drives value, right? You've gotta compare this to other assets in the area. There's a big difference between an A-class asset and a D-class. What are those differences? What are the customers here? What are they here? And in that marketplace, how is this product and the differences distributed within the market? I know this is a lot of intangibles, but they should be. We're talking about things that you need to be looking through and thinking dynamically within that asset. This is how we uncover opportunities. This is how when we see an asset, the price, okay, yeah, we need to know what obviously what we're gonna buy it for. But our underwriting process has way more to do with competitor tracking analysis, operations, looking at product market fit, than it has anything to do with some cap rate or even really the cost of the facility. That's why I say cap rates don't matter, as well as why when I look at an investing strategy, those are the last things that come to mind. I'm looking at revenue and cash flow. I'm looking at inefficiencies. I'm looking how I can improve it. I'm looking how much I believe that market will sustain. 
when you're getting things wrong when evaluating a facility, you first of all, you think that it's easy and there's some metrics that should just identify it. This is static investing. You're not believing that it's dynamic, right? The next thing that a lot of people are looking is they're wanting a one, two, three, four, five step. There just should be this exact process that has the exact same output every single time. And then they're frustrated when they can't find deals because they're given some exact process that somebody sold them and it's not playing out in a given marketplace or a given time. You need frameworks to understand value. So you need to build out your own framework and how you can derive value. So what is that? We have a framework, operationally speaking, in which we increase revenue. Strategies that we use that we can apply to an asset and we can see the overall outcome. Frameworks are adjustable. I can apply that framework to 10 different assets and I can see how the revenue may change. I can see the expense ratio low. I can apply it into a market that may be a little oversaturated or may have really high demand. That is the key. Build out frameworks of value. The next thing that I want to really work with you on is understanding your homework. Your homework is so important. And I still get this wrong, and I've got a story on how we failed on this. But we assume that real estate professionals, and they come out with these equations, and we come out with these expense load ratios, and they give you this market data. Lots of times, investors accept this as gospel truth. I don't care about hardly anything. I want rent rolls, right? I'm gonna do my own competitor analysis and tracking. We are going to compare assets in the market. I'm going to go to talk to the city and the, tax and the county about the tax schedules and how taxes are going to increase or decrease because it's one of the largest load of my expenses. I'm going to look at their employment structure, uh, structure with the employee. We are gonna do all of this homework to put into our frameworks to understand better the value. This allows us to test assumptions we may have. How high can we drive it up? Well, let's look at product type in the market. Let's compare it to other ones. Let's see how much inventory is on the market. We run through drills and scenarios where we're constantly testing different themes that we may have, right? Or investing philosophies within that market that we have. But that data comes from us. We have to go and obtain that data. The reason being is lots of the times it's not correct when you get it. And you think, well, a lot of things are standardized in real estate. Let me give you an example of one that just happened to us. We got a survey, which we accepted because it was by a surveyor. Turns out that survey was completely wrong. The owner had a past survey. They took that survey. The survey was to look at utilities and easements within the space. We have two surveys that are at odds with each other. They don't line up. One says, that a utility and its easement are not touching a biz building, the other one says that it is. Now, we can obviously, we could have gotten ours and said it is, we're walking away from this deal. Instead, we went and said, hold on, let's look at the prior past surveys done. They didn't match up. We can say, okay, and by the way, this happened a week before we closed. Shame on me, I know. We had some problems with the surveyors, obviously. What we ended up having to do is go straight to the city. We had to pull all the records. We had to basically do the survey for the surveyors, which both surveys were done wrong. The easements were in the wrong place. They didn't have the utilities, the sewer lines, even mapped out or done correctly. We had to then go and request all of this to be done to be produced to us. Why is that important? Because if you have a building over an easement, a bank's not gonna give you money. So this is a very fundamental thing, which by the way, you, could, you're, you might be saying, AJ, I don't know anything about that stuff. Neither do I. I didn't know anything about sewer line easements and not in the city that I was in. I didn't even know who to call. It's about finding solutions to problems and really discovering what's actually happening with the asset. And that's the key to it all. Be ready to dig in deep. When you go and you're looking at valuations in self-storage and all real estate, you have to come up with models to test assumptions. These models may be based on how much money you can get, what you think that you can do operationally. Some are very simple. I know people that have a strategy, they're buying facilities, and the only thing they're doing is cutting out a major expense. They wanna make sure it's in a good market, high demand. They're cutting out a major expense out of that facility. They're increasing cash flow and value dramatically. That's it. That is their model. And that's what they overlay on every single opportunity that they have. I have an operational model. I want to increase rates through revenue management, through dynamic pricing, 
we want to look at overall market offering. We want to look at our marketing strategy, our employees. We have all these little frameworks that we built over the years. When I got started, our frameworks were very, very simple. High delinquencies, no marketing. That's all I looked for. So we would go and somebody would offer us a price and that may have been a zero cap. What I mean by that is just the cap rate is nothing. It's, you know, it doesn't even exist. We're not getting a return on our money. But when we looked at it, that was based upon 15% delinquencies, zero marketing, in a market that was stabilized and really, really good. That obviously metric was a horrible metric of value. We could apply a very simple framework that we built, which was just two simple frame frameworks, and we could change the value of the facility in its entirety. All right, I hope these examples make sense and I hope you're understanding them. Let's recap real quick here. First, real estate is a business, not an investment. Stop looking at it as if it's a simple inve investment. When you're doing your underwriting and your valuations, don't look at it statically. Look at it dynamically. Look at it from all angles. You're looking at the overall revenue, okay? Can it be increased? Is it decreasing? What's causing those things? What are the inputs that are driving that revenue to go up or down? The stability of that revenue over a given time. What's your strategy? All those kind of things. Then when you look forward and you're looking at assets, get a framework in which you want to underwrite or which you want to value those before you go in to value them. Have a plan set up before you value them. Don't ask the brokers to have information come in and say, what's the cap rate? Is this a good cap rate? Yes or no? And don't be dependent on brokers and banks to make your investing decisions for you. It's a big, big problem we see out there in the marketplace because surprises happen and you don't wanna be surprised when you are building a business. The next thing, make sure that you are doing all the homework yourself. Question everything that's coming in and confirm everything that's coming in. On all fronts, get your own studies done, find out where property lines lie, have inspections of the buildings, see what capital expenditures are gonna look like in that asset by your own third parties. Look at roofs, look at all of those different kind of things. Protect your own basis. Do not accept that the owner said the roofs are in great condition. It's not that you don't trust him. Absolutely trust him. Then confirm, do your own homework. I hope this makes sense. It's not a one, two step, three step process. In fact, it's the opposite of it. But these are the tools that you can use and apply to actually be successful, to find undervalued business, to find opportunities that others are missing, all while protecting yourself for uncovering problems or large expenses that may not be known, and that will save you a ton, save you out of big financial problems in the future. Hope this helps everybody, thanks.